Hello. Hey there. I thought I would do another video today where I just talk about a pen-related topic that's been on my mind a lot recently. And uh, these these videos where I, I don't review pens, but I just, I just talk about a topic like this, seem to be very popular based on, on views and likes. So, first question, if you like these kinds of videos, maybe you can leave a comment below. And I, I appreciate it because then I know what kind of content to create that, you know, people like watching and actually enjoy viewing. Okay. What did I want to talk about today? I wanted to talk about selling pens. I get quite a lot of questions about selling pens. So I kind of want to take a two-pronged approach here and answer two questions. The first question is, where do you sell pens? And the second question is, why do you sell pens? And I don't mean by you, I don't mean me as a person, but I mean people in general. The first question is by far, I think, the simplest to answer. Where do you, do you sell your pens? This is a question that I probably get once every two to three months, uh, sometimes more than that. I have X pen that I don't use anymore. I want to sell it. Where would you sell it? Well, I have a website, sbrebrown.com slash four dash sale, and I put the pens on there. But obviously, you may not have a, a website largely dedicated to fountain pens, right? So... Um, that I think opens up the, the, the opens up the floor for, for questions. Where would you go? Well, there is eBay, and a lot of people sell pens on eBay, and there are local versions of eBay in the Netherlands. Marktplatz. I, I bought some pens there when I lived there. Uh, there is Craigslist. There is these kinds of things. eBay certainly is a good platform. I think if you have pens that are really geared towards collectors. There is good buyer protection on eBay, which is nice. Having said that, I have never sold anything on eBay, so I can't speak to the real pragmatics of that. I have bought pens and other items on eBay. There are also more dedicated locations. There is, for example, the Fountain Pen Network, and there is um, Fountain Pen Geeks. These are forums. There are also a local forums. There's an Italian pen forum. There are, there are many things. And then there are several Facebook groups. So these forums typically have classified sections. There are Facebook groups uh, dedicated to buying and selling. The fountain pens, buying and selling, for example. Or buying Anyway, if you, if you search on Facebook, you'll, you'll find that pretty quickly. For hip young people, Facebook is a type of social medium that old people like me use. Okay. Um, these are all avenues that work well. Now, the, 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 what people then ask me often as a follow-up question or in the same email is, but am I taking a risk? Like, I, I, you know, what if someone ends up not paying? I can have a lengthy discussion about this. The short answer is you always take a risk. If you sell something online, you always take a risk. There are horror stories. Uh, by the way, the virtual pen show on Instagram, also a good way to, to do it just pop to mind. And there too, I have heard horror stories of people who have sent out a pen before receiving payment and they ended up not getting paid. Yeah, that's a risk. And therefore, I'm sorry, my policy, policy is a very clear one. You get the pen when I have been paid. So when a payment has been made, then the pen is shipped as soon as I possibly can. It's the way it is. You have to figure out what works for you, but that's how it is. And that's what a lot of larger websites like eBay, for example, expect, right? You pay and then something is shipped. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to ask. It's clearly a matter of trust goes both ways, etc. But I promise I'd be brief. This is a risk, period, right? The final avenue that may not work for everyone, but that I have found uh, to be a, a good one for selling pens is... There's, of course, pen shows, but then often you have to rent a table, you have to do all kinds of things. Um, see if there's a local pen club. I have sold quite a couple of pens, and also paraphernalia, like pen cases I didn't use anymore, like, like you know, to carry pens, uh, sometimes inks. Um, uh, inks often are swapped, but anyway... I've definitely sold pens at the local pen club, both in the Netherlands when I was there and now in Canada. Here there's a Calgary pen club. Uh, I have sold quite a couple of pens. The nice thing about a pen club is you don't have to ship anything and it can be a matter of 
you get cash in hand and you hand over a pen or someone puts cash in your account, money in your account, uh, you know, an hour after leaving and you give them the pen then or you give them the pen before that. What I'm trying to say is in a pen club, you build up a personal relationship with people so you know the buyer more. That can be helpful. Because I know, for example, in Calgary, I know that there is the Matt Hatter, and he really loves titanium pens. So if I have a titanium pen that I want to sell, I offer it to him first, and there's a good chance that he will say, oh yes, I would like that. Uh, and then it's very easy. There can be a physical handoff somewhere, or I can send off the pen. It doesn't really matter. But especially, I think that is very nice that you kind of get to know the uh, the, the, the people that you're, you're dealing with, which may make you feel a little safer. But also, you know who might buy what type of pen that you would like to sell, right? Okay, that's the pragmatic part of where would you do it. And the second part of the video, I think, is a bit more esoteric slash philosophical, and that is why. Why would you, I'm just making a timestamp note here, uh, why would you sell pens at all? What I feel read between the lines, hear from people quite a bit, is something along these lines. I would love to sell pens, because I have too many, but I'm too attached to them. Well, don't be. Next point. No, it's a little harder than that. I know that. Once you have crossed the threshold of selling one of your pens for the first time, it becomes a lot easier, though. And if it helps, I have sold a lot of pens over the years. And hardly ever did I regret a sale afterwards. It has happened, but it is very, very rare. So I'll talk a little bit more about the process that I kind of go through to decide whether or not to sell a pen in hopes that that is helpful or useful to people. As to those emotional attachments, I think a very important thing to ask yourself is, is this a genuine emotional attachment or do I believe there is an emotional attachment while in reality there is not? And what I mean by that is this. I inherited a Parker 75 fountain pen and ballpoint set from my grandfather. I am not selling those pens. I have a genuine emotional attachment to them. He's used those pens for as long as I can remember. And when I use those pens, I think of him. I, I, I think of him. I, I remember him. Those will not be sold. There are other pens. I'll give you one example. I purchased a Stipula Etruria uh, Alter Ego. Um, it was a Etruria Magnifica at the Madrid Pen Show. I've only been to the Madrid Pen Show once. And for the longest time I used that pen, I kept that pen, I should say, because I didn't use it very often, I'll get back to that, but I kept that pen with the idea of, you know, I got at the Madrid pen show though. This is kind of a keepsake of that pen show. It was, yeah, that was the last pen show I went to while I lived in the Netherlands, in Europe, or the last European pen show, I should say. So I should, I should keep that. For that, for that memory. But then at some point, I stopped and I had this psychological breakthrough where I thought, but does it really matter? I ink up that pen maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, but that's it. Now, I have certain pens that I can point out if I, if I would pull out a case of pens. I don't have that many pens anymore. I could pull out pens right now and I could tell you, you know, this pen is inked up multiple times a year. Almost all the time. For example, my Conant King Size Bulk Filler. That pen sees a lot of views. A lot of views. I love it. It's pragmatic. It's not obscenely oversized. It's a great writer. I love everything about that pen. Period. Well, then we're done, aren't we? That is not a pen that I would sell. But then back to this stipula. Yes, I have emotional... I had emotional attachment to it. But it was kind of silly. To me, it was kind of silly. That I, would, that I would hold on to a pen that I hardly ever use simply because of the attachment. And along those lines, I've started to sell off a number of pens that I thought I would never sell. Danny Trio Genkai is another good example. I love that pen when I got it, but realistically, I may be inked it up 0.5 times a year. 
Every other year I would ink it up and write with it. But I couldn't really take it to work because it was so big. It didn't fit my normal pen case. So I'd have to carry a special pen case with that pen. Now I have a little four pen case. I don't have it at hand here. No. But I carry that to work. And then I have four pens. If I have to carry an additional case for just a single pen, right, it's a lot. To me, it's a lot. Then I have, I have to carry that. I, I, there's more potential to lose stuff. I just don't want to be in the situation. And then I thought to myself, much as I love this pen, I don't use it enough. So that, to me, has become part of a two-pronged process. When it comes to certain pens, I first ask myself, do I have an emotional attachment to this pen? And if I do, is it a genuine emotional attachment? Or do I only believe, have I kind of convinced myself that it is an emotional attachment, while in reality it is not? And then my second question is, okay, given that this is not a real important emotional attachment to me, how often do I use this pen? And if the answer is really not that often, and I don't have a hard and fast criterion, but for me, if I ink up a pen once a year, I probably don't need that pen. I can free up funds by selling it, that I can then put towards other things, maybe another pen that I really like and that I, I might want to want to really have and explore and, and you know something like that. I might end up selling that pen too, but it, it could be something like that. And then on top of that, I have a core rotation of pens that I absolutely love. And it's really a handful of pens at this point. I, I think it's maybe 10 pens that I really love and that I use a lot and of those there are probably four or five that I really use a lot and the rest will slowly but surely be sold off because for me suffering from dragon syndrome and and accumulating more and more pens just to have them with the feeling of oh I have I have to have this pen now I have it but all you're doing is really sitting on a pile of pens most of which are never used to me, it's not worth it. Now, your mileage, of course, may vary. Perhaps to you, that is very much worth it. Maybe that is how you use pens, how you, how you find the use of fountain pens enjoyable. And I'm not negatively commenting on that. I'm just saying I want to be very pragmatic in what I own. And given that I owned a couple of pens that really are quite expensive, but that I never used, what's the point of sitting on those pens that are unused? Then I may as well sell them, free up some funds for me, but also pass on that pen to someone who really enjoys it. And with the stipula, for example, that happened, it went to someone who really enjoyed it and who, who, who commented, who, who wrote me an email saying, you know, I actually watched that personal pen video, so you did my personal pen video on that pen that you did, and it's now more special to me because, because I now understand the, the, the emotional meaning it had to you. And that's really nice, right? Now, the final thing I wanted to say is, that was a nice segue from emotional stuff, what if it ends up, because this, again, this, I already alluded to this a little bit, um, but what about the emotional aspect of this? Because that's a question I get quite a lot. What if I will regret it? What if I end up selling this pen and I regret it? It has happened to me, but very rarely so. Very rarely so. And when I say very rarely so, I can say that I have... I've sold a few hundred pens. I owned way more than I have now. And of those, there were maybe two. I would say at most three that I, I sold and that I later thought... I kind of regret that a little bit. But... As time passes, so does that feeling. Now, I'm assuming that if you're like me, you don't have a lot of one-of-a-kind pens. So if the grief is too big, like it's too big to bear, you, you simply you regret selling that Faber-Castell emotion so much, you can probably buy another one. May have to save up for it a bit. May have to look around, maybe the pen is discontinued, but so many pens end up in the pre-owned market, you 
might very well be able to replace that pen. So it's not really a big deal. But most of all, I think this truly is a mindset. It is a mindset of, and that's what I do. I sometimes think of a pen that I miss a bit, and I think, yeah, but you know what? It went to someone who really wanted that pen. And a lot of people, like I sometimes, I, 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 I'll be honest, this, this may make me sound really insane, but I'll, I'll tell you anyway. There are a few pens that I've sold. I think, for example, of my friend Kyle, who bought my Omas Paragon Grand in Arco. That's a pen I don't regret selling because I know that it went to a really nice person, but that once in a while I check up on. I just ask him, hey, you still like that pen? If he sells it at some point, that's no problem. Like, I, I, I would, right? That's, it's his pen now. I just, you know, you just still like the pen. And then I, I get a message usually through Instagram. Yeah, no, I love it. I just had it inked up. Or yeah, yeah, no, it, look, here it is, you know. Um, and I don't, I don't do this for the record. Like, I don't do this twice a week, right? This happens maybe once a year, I hope. Um, sorry, Kyle, for uh, harassing you. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> but but I'm, I'm just saying this, saying this kind of jokingly. But I mean, the thought of maybe I missed this pen a little bit, bit, little bit, but you know, it went to someone who's really enjoying it, who's using it way more than I did, because for me, that pen was not inked most of the time. But now it gets a lot of action, right? That I think is very special. And that is something uh, that has certainly helped me in the very rare cases. Again, that, that Paragon is not one of those where I have regretted selling a pen. And that's it. So these are my thoughts on selling pens, where to sell them, also how to sell them. Um, I hope this was useful. I hope this has given you some, some thought. For me, these are my final words on this. I have found I'm really moving towards a state where I want to have a very small number of pens that I absolutely love and that I use all the time. When I say very small number, I'm really hoping to get it to 15, maybe 12 pens, but that I absolutely love and that I use all the time as opposed to having 40 pens, 100 pens, 300 pens. I've been at the 300 pen level, right, many years ago. I would much rather have 12 pens that I love than 300 pens where there are 10 I love and 290 that I just do not use. But that's for me. I find that a comforting thought. I have some pens. Some of them are quite expensive, but I only have 12 of them. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting pretty close, and that's where I want to be. So, there you have it. Hope this was useful. Let me know if you thought this was interesting. I always hope that. Let me know what your thoughts on selling pens are. If you have sold pens or if you're kind of holding back. If you were holding back, maybe this video has added something. I would love to hear that. Um, because then I know that I was not rambling insanely and not contributing anything. After all, you're either part of the problem or part of the solution or part of the landscape. And I don't want to look like a tree. Um, let me know if you like talk videos like these. Bye!